Meet James Jasper McCann, Scotland's notorious most dangerous man emerging from the gritty East End of Glasgow. Infamous for brutal violence in his teens, he wielded a knife as weapon of choice, leaving an indelible mark on the streets. Despite a brief stint in a young offender's institution, he was released in under two years, his reputation attracting the attention of organized crime. As McCann re-entered society, his notoriety grew, becoming a focal point for older members in the criminal underworld. This exploration delves into the roots of his violent tendencies, exposing the ominous path that solidified his status as one of Scotland's most perilous figures. Stay tuned for the captivating story of James Jasper McCann, unraveling the complexities of his criminal journey and the dark world he inhabits. McCann, a prominent figure in local gangs, gained a reputation for executing tasks with unwavering resolve, irrespective of the required violence. Notably affiliated with the Daniels family and gangster Robert Kelby, he surpassed peers in connections, emerging as a high-level enforcer during a heated feud with drug kingpin Mark Richardson. McCann's loyalty was fleeting, motivated primarily by financial gain, as he auctioned his services to the highest bidder. Despite early notoriety with law enforcement, he persisted in the perilous underworld, displaying relentless determination in pursuing personal interests and navigating the shadows of criminal enterprises. His audacious approach and strategic alliances positioned him as a formidable force, making him a sought-after asset in the intricate web of underworld dealings. In 1996, James Jasper McCann began a substantial prison term for an unprovoked 1994 knife attack in Edinburgh. Despite telling the judge he was there because he felt Edinburgh was safer, even though he contributed to Glasgow's peril. McCann received a seven-year sentence for permanently disfiguring Stephen Walker. While in Schott's prison, he allegedly attempted to murder Tam Bagan, suspected of aiding the serious crime squad. This incident unveils the intricacies of McCann's criminal history, characterized by violence, a penchant for danger, and a readiness to act, even behind bars. His actions showcased a turbulent journey through the criminal underworld, where alliances and conflicts shaped his trajectory. McCann's prison time mirrored the unpredictable nature of his life, marked by a relentless pursuit of his own agenda amidst the confines of legal consequences. His willingness to confront danger, both within and outside prison walls, added layers to his enigmatic criminal persona, leaving an indelible mark on the complex tapestry of his criminal legacy. McCann allegedly accepted a contract to assassinate Tam Bagan, leading to a brutal prison attack where he stabbed Bagan three times. Despite Bagan surviving, he adhered to the gangland code of silence. Six weeks later, McCann faced retaliation orchestrated by Fergus Lee Park hardman Paul Sheehan, resulting in a stabbing. Ironically, Sheehan met a violent end in 2002 post-prison release. Following his release, McCann returned to crime, encountering another ultra-violent incident in August 2006. This tumultuous journey reflects McCann's resilience amid the perilous gangland landscape. His involvement in contract killings, retaliatory attacks, and brushes with death highlights the volatile dynamics within the criminal fraternity. McCann's ability to navigate these treacherous waters underscores the complexities and dangers inherent in the gangland lifestyle, where loyalty, revenge, and survival intertwine in a deadly dance. In a brazen daylight assault on the streets of Glasgow, George Goofy Dougherty, an associate of the Lyons crime family, fell victim to a brutal attack that ultimately claimed his life. A knife-wielding hitman ambushed him, leaping out of a car that pulled up beside him. Doherty, anticipating danger, was clad in a stab-proof vest. Undeterred, the assailant repeatedly stabbed him in the legs and groin during this vicious attack. Once Doherty was incapacitated, the driver of the car took further gruesome measures, running over him and then reversing to ensure his demise. To solidify the outcome, the driver ran over him a third time. Given Doherty's extensive list of enemies, Stemming from his actions over the years, various parties could have orchestrated the hit. As a knife attack unfolded, it seemed plausible for James Jasper McCann to be pulled in for questioning. However, despite the police's efforts, they couldn't establish a direct link between McCann and the murder. Consequently, no one was charged in connection with Doherty's murder, leaving it unresolved. Several months later in November 2006, McCann found himself in legal trouble once again. He was discovered in possession of a machine gun, a silencer, a revolver, 
and several rounds of ammunition at addresses linked to him. Charged with the possession of illegal weapons and ammunition, McCann was sentenced to seven years in prison. Released in late 2011, he swiftly resumed his criminal activities, taking on the role of an enforcer for Robert Kelby in an ongoing feud with Edinburgh drug kingpin Mark Richardson. The tumultuous events surrounding McCann life paint a vivid picture of the dangerous and unpredictable world he inhabited. Fueled by a desire for revenge for Robert Kelby's 2010 shooting, James Jasper McCann, with Mark Richardson incarcerated, sought out AGS Autos, a garage operated by Richardson's then-girlfriend's father, Stephen Dignan. At the garage's forecourt, McCann encountered Dignan's business partner, Gordon Archibald. An exchange of words escalated into a frenzied attack, with McCann slashing Archibald across the face and stabbing him in the stomach. In a twist of events, it appeared that McCann had targeted the wrong individual, as Dignan might have been the intended victim. However, the primary objective of the assault seemed to be sending a chilling message to Mark Richardson. A witness, present during the trial, vividly described the catastrophic injuries suffered by Archibald as he stumbled into the garage's waiting area. She recounted that the part of his face slashed by McCann was hanging down, touching his shoulder, and he had a severe cut from his ear to his mouth. The bleeding was profuse, prompting the woman to assist him to her car and urgently drive him to the hospital. This incident reflects the volatile nature of McCann's pursuit of vengeance and the lengths to which he was willing to go to communicate a brutal message within the intricate web of criminal feuds. In a bizarre turn of events, James Jasper McCann managed to walk free from the High Court in Edinburgh for an attack that, on the surface, seemed heinous. The victim, Gordon Archibald, too terrified to testify, resulted in the collapse of the case against McCann. The prosecution hinged on Archibald's testimony, but his fear of McCann paralyzed him leading to the unraveling of the case as it commenced. Another incident serves as a testament to McCann's ruthless and callous nature. In 2014, he allegedly carried out a brutal knife attack on his own cousin, David Santini, a notorious heroin smuggling kingpin known for a 1.1 million pounds heroin bust that landed him an 11-year prison sentence. The cousins had a falling out over money, prompting McCann and an associate to visit Santini at his luxurious residence. It is claimed that McCann viciously slashed Santini across the face, leaving an 8-inch gash. Despite facing charges for this attack, McCann once again managed to evade conviction, as Santini chose not to identify his assailant. In a peculiar pattern, McCann, with what seems like a stack of get-out-of-jail-free cards, found himself back behind bars a few years later. This time, he faced charges for a prolonged and torturous attack on a man named Paul Connor. The assault, orchestrated by McCann, his brother Robert and associate Greg Bannerman, unfolded in two different flats, one in Glasgow and the other in Airdrie. The motive behind the attack was an attempt to extort money from Connor, who had received compensation for a car accident. During the brutal assault, Connor was choked, punched, and repeatedly struck with a claw hammer, while McCann menacingly conveyed his intent to kill him and dispose of his body. The disturbing sequence of events underscores the dark and violent path that McCann continued to tread. During this ordeal, Connor was informed that he would be injected with pure heroin to simulate an overdose, extending the torment for many agonizing hours. The horrific episode only concluded when, in a final act of desperation, Paul Connor managed to throw himself out of a first-floor window, escaping the clutches of his tormentors. In the aftermath, McCann, his brother, and Bannerman faced the legal consequences of their heinous actions. In 2019, they were handed sentences ranging from five to nine years for their roles in the protracted torture of Paul Connor. Despite James McCann, once dubbed the most dangerous man in Scotland currently serving time behind bars, speculation arises about his future upon release. Will he revert to his violent tendencies, or is there a possibility of him leading a law-abiding life? The question lingers as McCann contemplates his eventual return to society. As we wrap up this video, we invite you to share your thoughts in the comments. Will McCann's release herald a return to violence, or could there be a chance for redemption? Thank you for joining us, and if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.